Hello and welcome to the Car Care Not channel. Welcome to a brand new series on my channel about Toyota Safety Sense. This system is, is often misunderstood, misused, or there's a lot of misconceptions about it. So in this series, I'm going to try my absolute best to explain everything, both how it works for you as a consumer, and then how it actually works behind the scenes. We're going to follow a theme that has been established on this channel, which is we're going to keep things simple because trust me on this one, they are super complicated. But before we get started, consider subscribing to the channel if you're new to it. Check out some of my other videos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's dig right into it. Let's start with a small overview. Now, this system, as, as the name says, Toyota Safety Sense, safety is the biggest thing. So people will be wondering, wait a minute, why are we talking about cruise control? Actually, it all started with cruise control, at least in my humble opinion. Radar cruise control or dynamic cruise control or adaptive cruise control. This started back all the way 2004. It was actually called laser guided cruise control, which sounds like something else, but it is in a sense. But it all started, as far as I remember, 2004 Sienna of all Toyota lineup. You would think the Avalon first or maybe the Land Cruiser. It was actually a 2004 Sienna. It came out with laser cruise control and Everything stemmed from that point on forward to now, which the car almost drives itself if the government lets it. So in this series about the system, we're going to start with radar cruise control, which we're going to talk about components. I want to break the series in components. We're going to talk about the radar sensor. We're going to talk about the front recognition camera, and we're going to see how these two are going to tie in together, how they work together. So now that we have cleared up this confusion about why cruise control is in the Toyota safety sense, let's start talking about the radar sensor itself. So the radar sensor, or the official name is millimeter wave radar sensor, sounds like a very fancy name. And in most Toyota models, just, just so we can meet the guy before we talk about him, it's right here for most part some some newer suvs or the trucks mainly or let's put it in a different way the cars that were initially designed without it and then it was added on to it like the forerunner for example it is located somewhere else but for most modern toyotas it is directly behind the toyota emblem and the way to know if you have it or don't have it on some of the slightly older models is Pass your hand over the emblem. Do you feel a texture on the envelope or is it just a flat surface? If it's a flat surface like this, that's a radar sensor behind there. If it's a textured emblem, it's not there. Usually you'll see a part of the grill, like you see in this Forerunner, that is flat and it has a similar texture to this one. That's where the radar sensor is. So radar cruise control. Your normal cruise control, you set it and forget it. Someone cuts you off, you gotta slam on the brakes. The basic idea of radar cruise control is you set the cruise control, it's gonna follow the car in front of you. Let's say you set it at 70 miles an hour, car in front, someone cuts you off doing 65. The car is automatically gonna slow down, follow the distance, keep a specific distance, safe distance behind that car. When that car moves away, it's gonna continue on to 70 miles an hour. There are actually two style of this system. There is a full speed and there is a not full speed. I guess that it doesn't have really a name. So the full speed one is, let's say you're doing 70 miles an hour and the traffic's coming to a stop slowly. It's gonna continue to slow down the car until it completely comes to a complete stop. The non full speed, if you would, 
will disengage at a certain speed, usually around 20 miles an hour, it will just disengage, it will beep, disengage, and now you're on your own. So that system comes really in handy and it's great, it works great for long trips. You can just set it, really take focus only on the steering wheel and the car will slow down with, with movement of traffic and it'll make your trip a lot more comfortable. So having said that, I just wanna say one thing before we move on to how it actually works. Did you know that all Toyota models that are equipped with this system also are equipped with the other old school cruise control. Most people don't even know this. If you just don't like this gizmos and you just want a good old cruise control, you're driving in the middle of nowhere, there's not even a single car, and you feel nervous about the system, you just want a good old classic cruise control. There are two style cruise control buttons in Toyotas. There's the stock that comes off the steering wheel, and now in the newer ones, there's a button on the steering wheel. Well, if you, the button to whichever style you have, the button that turns on the cruise control, if you press it and hold it for three seconds, it'll actually flip to non-dynamic or non-radar guided cruise control. And now you have just a good old cruise control from 1995, which works great, doesn't slow down, doesn't do anything. You crash into the car in front of you if, uh, she, if someone cuts in front of you. So just know that you do have the option of canceling it and using the normal one. So now let's talk about how it actually works. So how does this thing work? I know how it works, how to turn it on and everything, but how does it actually work? I talked earlier about the laser guided cruise control. And we said there was two styles. Let's talk about the laser guided cruise control for a bit. The laser guided cruise control, it simply had two sensors of you. And usually it mounted very low in the bumper. One of them send a laser out and that laser went out. Let's say there's a car in front of you. It deflected off this car and came back and there was a receiver. It received that laser and it's counting time, if you would, to put it simply. And that's how it knows how far the car in front of you is. That's why it was not super accurate because, you know, laser bounces all over the place. It was not super quick, if you would. And you notice the cars with laser cruise control, someone cuts in front of you, the whole car just slams on the brakes because now it thinks it's too. And usually when you follow the car in front of you, you were a good three car, four car length because the system couldn't really get you that close safely. So that was the laser cruise control. It's a simple concept. It's a lot more complicated than that because it has to process that signal that's coming back and do all this fancy stuff. But we're gonna keep it simple. It sends the little laser, laser comes back. I like how uh, it's counting, you know, Mr. Computer is have a little time watch, if you would, and uh, it's watching the time. Well, it went, came back, okay, let's do some math, have a little bunch of guys in a white coat. Okay, this is how far is the car in front of us. Nice and simple. So the radar sensor. It is essentially a uh, civilian version, if you would, of a military radar. I'm not, I don't know exactly how it is used in military, how different the military one is. I just know that it's the same concept, just on a much smaller, less scary scale, if you would. So this little guy sends, it essentially operates the same as laser, but it just takes it one step further, if you would. So this guy sends multiple waves out and then these waves bounce off everything in front of it and it turns around and comes back and there's a receiver that collects all these giant herd of waves and starts analyzing them. And it's gonna know two things from those incoming waves, if you would. It's gonna determine how far is the object in front of me, like the car, and how fast it's going. And that's the biggest thing there. It's not only gonna determine, okay, this car in front of us is slower than me, I'm coming closer to it, but how fast is that car moving? It's gonna be able to process that. And by knowing that, it's let's say 
you set your cruise control at 70 miles an hour. Now the car in front of you, a car jumps in front of you or all of a sudden you're approaching a car. If it doesn't know how fast that car is going, it just knows it's incoming. I see something there and it's coming closer. I don't like it. It's going to slam on the brakes. And that's exactly what the laser cruise control did. It was very clunky and it just slammed on the brakes and just shook everything down. Folks, if someone had a laser cruise control, you're going to know what I'm talking about if you've ever used it. Now, the, the radar one, the coolest thing about it is it's smooth operation. Unless someone absolutely cuts you off and slam on their brakes, then that's a different story. But on normal driving, because it knows you set your cruise control at 70 miles an hour, the person in front of you that is approaching, it's going to know how fast they're going. Let's say they're going 65. Well, the car is going to calculate, the computer is going to calculate how much brake or how much distance do I have and how much do I have to slow down? So uh, I need to go from 70 to 65. I don't need to slam on the brakes. I'm just going to let go of the gas. I have enough distance to slow my car from 70 miles an hour to 65 without using brakes. So I'm just going to ease off the throttle let the car coast, and when we get to 65, now we're following that car at a safe distance, we just keep going. That's why this operation is a lot smoother than the laser cruise control. And this is what makes this system just beautiful thing to drive on the expressway on a long trip, makes it super comfortable. And really, it just have this guy, this, this does everything. There is, of course, an, a processing unit inside here. This is actually a computer. And there is another computer. It's called the Driving Support ECU. It does a lot more than just this, but it also controls this guy. And so all these computers are talking back and forth. They're having meetings, they're drinking coffee, they're, they're doing all these, this stuff behind the scenes as you're simply cruising along on the highway, cruise control on. Not a worry in the world. They're just constantly looking. Is this car coming this way? Is this car coming this way? Is this... All this mess is happening in the background. But it makes this system very reliable. To a point. We're going to talk about that point in a second. And it makes it really error-free for the most part. There's always errors. There's always things that affect this guy. So this beautiful system is really trouble-free for the most part. There are some things that will really mess with it. For example, you're driving on the street and the this is sending its waves and it's doing all this giant mess. And all of a sudden there's a piece of metal on the street. That's, it's gonna, it could pick that up. Or the uh, 1955 Chevy in front of you had a hubcap, metal hubcap that flew off of it and went to the side. Well, this guy's gonna pick that up as an object. Now remember, it could tell speed, it could tell distance, but it doesn't know if it's a car, bicycle, whatever, it's an object. I see an object, we're gonna stop. So there are realistic limitations to this system, but they're not very often. There's not very often that a metal hubcap of 55 Chevy comes flying off. So yes, there are limitations to this system and folks, old school folks, I consider myself on the border of old school. This can be much to trust and sometimes this system really makes me nervous. When you're coming to a complete stop and the car is just like, please stop, please, I, no, I can't, I need to press the brake. Folks, this system works really good, but you cannot just trust it blindly. This system is designed that you're also looking and you're also aware of what's going on. So don't forget that. This is more for the younger generation that loves these things. And, and this is great technology. It works really good, but you always have to supervise it. That's just the way this is. Another problem with this system that seems to happen exactly at a specific time every year. Christmas time. For me, it's one of the most joyous times of the year. It is the birth of my Redeemer. Different people celebrate it in different ways. 
And uh, the most common way that brings people hurting to the dealership is this. Yeah, that different people celebrate it different ways. So when you do this, here's what the computer is gonna do. You put a Christmas ornament in front of the badge because you are celebrating. I celebrate as well, I understand. However, the computer is gonna go, hmm, wait a minute. I have an object that is sitting at my nose. So did we crash? No. Um, I don't like it. So it's gonna just shut everything off and say, there's something wrong, I don't like it. Another scenario is, also around Christmas time, uh, if you're from uh, Chicago or the northern areas or someplace where we have white Christmas, this will be covered with snow. The older, slightly older system that still had radar, it would just, I don't like it, something I can't see, we're gonna shut everything off and we're gonna say there's a problem. The newer systems are a little bit smarter about picking up snow and dirt and heavy rain. It's just gonna disable the system, but it's gonna tell you there is obstruction to the sensor in one way, shape or form. It's gonna turn it off and tell you. Folks, don't block the sensor. It's as simple as that. Now that you know where it is, and if you drive a different model that has it not here, you need to know where it is and keep it as clean as possible. We're not talking about slight dirt and bugs and stuff. We're talking about heavy contamination that almost blocks it like that blocks it completely. But these are the main problems with this system. The other significant problem that you need to be aware of and you really need to know, especially if you're buying a car, Accidents. This guy has a front row seat to front accidents. You hit this car, this sensor is gonna get damaged, but okay, insurance will pay for it, right? Well, just replace it and life is good. No, that is not the case. This sensor needs to sit at a specific location and it needs to be calibrated. Remember we said distance and speed? It has to know, it has to be calibrated. It has to know, well, how much distance is exact distance, if you would. So in calibrating these sensors, we put a specific target in a specific spot. It has to be measured very precisely. And now we go into programming the sensor into telling him, hey man, the object that I put is this amount, this specific amount of distance. So now the sensor gets calibrated, okay, that object is this far, let me send my waves, let's calibrate everything, everything is good, I'm happy, we're good. And the most important thing is, the sensor needs to be perfectly straight, not facing sideways, picking up the car in the second lane or the other lane. It also needs to be facing directly straight, not facing up, picking up the power cables or facing down, picking up the bridge joints, if you would, the metal red joints. So this sensor location needs to be very precise and it needs to be calibrated. So every time this car gets in an accident, it is very important that this is fixed perfect. Perfect is the word here. And most body shops who are professional, who take pride in their work, they do this perfect. Most body shops that don't do things perfect, for lack of a better term, this car will, this sensor will never work right again. That's just the way it is. So folks, if you get an accident with a car equipped with this system, make sure you fix it right. If you're buying a car, make sure that this car has never been an accident is my usual recommendation. But if it has been an accident, make sure the system works perfect and make sure things have been fixed right. Folks, I have seen all kinds of crazy repairs with this. I've seen people zip tie this sensor on because the bracket broke. I've, be, I've seen people glue it on. I've seen sensors that are cracked and exposed to the elements. Remember, the sensor is outside. It gets water splashed on it, all kinds of stuff. So this is very important. I cannot emphasize how important this is. 
So now that you know how the system works and how it actually works, how did this cruise control turn into the Toyota Safety Sense? Well, here's the thought, and I can imagine they had a very long and hard meeting about this, which was very complicated, but simply, hey, if this can stop the car and pick up objects, why don't we just use it for uh, accident prevention? I like that idea. I love that idea. So this will lead us to the next episode in this series, Toyota Pre-Collision System, which prevents accidents, detects pedestrians, does all that stuff, and it does all this stuff with the help of the radar sensor's best friend. We'll talk about that best friend in the next episode. I hope you learned something new. I hope this video was informative. I hope you liked it. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have a wonderful day.